Hello everyone, welcome to the COI report. Philip here. Since the second half of 2019, you must have been hearing about chips and semiconductors in the news, rarely in the category of international affairs. So it really sounds like something serious, huh? Today we're going to take a closer look at the chip manufacturer in the semiconductor industry. First, the chip complaint is called a foundry model, consisting of a unit of semiconductor fabrication plant and a unit for integrated circuit design. According to the combinations of these two units, complaints in the semiconductor industry are divided into three categories. A. Integrated Device Manufacturers, for short IDMs. They are able to design and manufacture integrated circuits on their own. For example, Intel, Samsung Electronics, Texas Instruments, and so forth. B. Fabulous Semiconductor Complaints. They only design the circuits like Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and AMD. C. Pure play foundries like TSMC, Samsung Conductor, and Global Foundries. They only take the orders from Category B complaints and produce the chips for their customers. These representative pure play complaints are the main characters in this episode. All data and events were acquired from the annual reports and public announcements from the complaints. However, as two of the three complaints are not listed for public trade, there are not really many original resources available online, so as a supplement, I will add some uh, literary materials. Another thing is, today's video of the Pure Play Foundries is actually the first episode of the series on the semiconductor industry. In the future two episodes, I will introduce the worldwide leading fabulous complaints and IDMs in this industry. If you guys would like to see more of this kind of topics, please leave a message. First of all, let's have a look at the world's most valuable semiconductor manufacturer, the TSMC, which stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. It is the world's largest dedicated independent, or say, pure play semiconductor foundry. Until now, it has 12 foundry plants and covers almost all kinds of chip progress that are common on the market. Chip progress is, um, in simple words, the technology of miniaturizing semiconductors. In principle, the smaller the better. The company was founded in 1987, benefited from the industrial transfer and the government plan to introduce new industry branches in Taiwan. Maurice Chen was nominated as the initial founder of the new company. Yes, you have me right. He was nominated as the founder. The company started with a contract with Philip. I mean, the Dutch enterprise Philip. As written in the autobiography of Mr. Chen, the best technology they got from Philip at that time was already two to three generations behind the newest one in the US. So it was quite hard for the company at the beginning, but they had to take it because it at least kept the factory running. As Chen has written, and I quoted, the biggest advantage for TSMC was they had no competitor. The biggest disadvantage was they had absolutely no customer. Meanwhile, Chen tried several times to seek investment from Intel because he had some uh, acquaintances with Robert Noyes and Gordon Moore. These two were big names in Intel. Although Intel denied direct investment, it offered TSMC the first order, and it is this first order that helped TSMC survive and open the international market. Later, it was listed on Taiwan Stock Exchange in 1994 and on the New York Stock Exchange in 1997. Most of the shares of the company are held by international foundations. It has experienced quick development and expansion since then. Although the semiconductor industry was periodic and influenced by the so-called Moore's Law in the past few decades, TSMC has always been improving and upgrading its manufacturing technologies right in time. In 2011, after a round of new investment in research and development expenditures and an expansion in capacity, TSMC won the contract to produce the A5 and A6 chip for Apple's iPad and iPhone devices. It was the start of the cooperation between Apple and TSMC. According to an annual report, since May 2014, Apple has been outsourcing its newest chips to the TSMC almost exclusively, especially in the latest years. Apple has been TSMC's most important customer for a decade. Not surprisingly, in the past couple of years, TSMC underwent division, merging, stock exchange between the subsidiaries, and personnel changes in the board of directors. Nevertheless, one remarkable point is that TSMC always foresaw the needs of the market and made the right decision. After many runs of capital appropriation, capacity expansion, and technology upgradation, TSMC 
gradually captured the leading position in the semiconductor industry. As TSMC has the most advanced technology in semiconductor production, most of the leading fabric semiconductor companies are customers of it, such as AMD, Apple, Nvidia, and Qualcomm. Some IDM companies, such as Intel and Texas Instruments, also outsource some of their products to TSMC. Also, many former circuit companies and competitors have become a side of the history. TSMC always exists and has been always occupying the leading position in the whole industry. As TSMC has built up its leading position in the chip manufacturing industry, it also used the secret weapon of the patent law to press down the competitors and consolidate its own place. Since 2009, TSMC has been firing lawsuits against SMIC, accusing it of patent plagiarism. SMIC has paid lots of money for this and has lost its first opportunity to surpass TSMC. In 2019, TSMC filed lawsuits against Global Foundries for similar reasons. However, Global Foundries is not SMIC and the United States is not China, so TSMC and Global Foundries reached a profit agreement before the end of the year. At this moment, TSMC is one of the two foundries which are capable of 7nm and 5nm mass production. It is these exclusively advanced chip capacities that have brought a boom in TSMC's annual revenue. TSMC has also released good news about the 3nm mass production, which is estimated to make TSMC flourish more. In the coming months, TSMC is going to first release the world's first 4nm SOC, which is estimated to be first carried either on April's M2 or MediaTek's Dimensity 2000. The second largest chip maker is Samsung Semiconductor, a business unit of Samsung Electronics, which is a subsidiary company of the Samsung Group. Samsung is indeed a Korean national enterprise, but Samsung Electronics is a typical international company, and its major investigators come from abroad. In our context, we don't distinguish between Samsung Group and Samsung Electronics, but I don't think it will confuse anybody. It's just like when we talk about Google, sometimes we mean Google the search engine, sometimes we mean the mother company Alphabet, and nobody feels puzzled by that. By the way, the various Samsung products that we can buy as an international customer all come from Samsung Electronics. The predecessor company Samsung Electric Industries was founded in 1969 in South Korea. Samsung's early products were electronic and electrical appliances, including calculators, televisions, refrigerators, air conditioning, wash machine, and so on. In 1973, Samsung and Stenyu founded a new company, which was renamed Samsung Electromechanics a few years later. In 1977, it was merged with Samsung. In 1974, Samsung expanded into the semiconductor business. It acquired the company Korea Semiconductor during the latter's bankruptcy and merged it with Samsung's subsidiary Korea Telecommunications. Later, the new company was renamed Samsung Semiconductor and Communications. In 1983, Samsung announced its plan to produce a dynamic random access memory, DRAM. This step brought an evolutionary change to the whole company in 1988. Samsung Electric Industries merged with Samsung Semiconductor and Communications to build the new brand Samsung Electronics, thereby staged the company the real Samsung Electronics. As many of you may already know, the Korean industry benefited a lot from the industry transfer from Japan and the USA. So when the Korean industries started to flourish, their aim was to surpass and replace the places of their Japanese or American fellow companies. As for Samsung, ordered by the timeline, it surpasses Sanyu, Sony, Intel, and gradually becomes the world's most valuable consumer's brand. The most famous product of the whole department of semiconductor has always been the memory chips, such as RAM memory, flash memory, and so forth. For many years, Apple has been selecting Samsung's memory chips for their product lines. In terms of SOCs, Samsung remained a key supplier of Apple's component until October 2013, when Samsung manufactured the A7 processors for iPhone 5S for the last deal. As we're talking about the semiconductor industry, we must focus on Samsung's semiconductor department, which is one of the four departments of Samsung Electronics, Digital Media, Semiconductor, Telecommunication Network, and LCD Digital Appliances. 
it was not until 2011 that Samsung decided to set the semiconductor production as one of the three business units of the semiconductor department and start to provide the outsourcing service for fabulous companies. This move has brought prosperity to Samsung and makes Samsung capable of the competition with TSMC after entering the 7 nanometer progress. Now, Samsung is one of the two chip makers capable of 5 nanometer mass production. The market is expecting more fierce competition of high end progress between TSMC and Samsung. The two companies are also seeing each other as a mortal enemy. The third biggest chip maker is the Global Foundries, for short, GF. It was actually a diversity tour of the manufacturing department of AMD since AMD planned to go fabulous in 2008. They spun up their semiconductor manufacturing business into a new company and announced the establishment of Global Foundries on March the 4th, 2009. It was owned by AMD and Advanced Technology Investment Company, ATIC, of the Emirati of Abu Dhabi. The two companies equally shared voting rights. In March 2012, AMD divested their final stake in the company. Thereafter, Global Foundries became an independent semiconductor manufacturer. GF plans to become a publicly traded company by the end of 2022. Compared with the other two companies, GF is literally born with a golden spoon. It had advantages in both technology and financial support. The company developed actually well in the first couple of years, acquiring semiconductor units from several other enterprises. Big customers like AMD, IBM, and Broadcom are always supporting GF like supporting their own children. In 2016, Global Foundries acquired the license for the 14 nanometer progress from Samsung Electronics. Two years later, it developed the old technique to the new 12 nanometer progress. It was the highlight moment of Global Foundries. However, since it started to change as it came to 2019, GF sold out several foundry plans. Meanwhile, like mentioned before, Global Foundries and TSMC were filing lawsuits against each other across the whole year. In 2020, its newest fab in China went offline after the initial investment and trial production. The reasons behind the decline are diverse. One of the biggest reasons is lacking of a spiritual figure and leader in a company who is dedicated to either making good products or making the company great. ATIC has always taken GF as a money-making machine. In the past decade, the board has nominated four C. One of the results is GF is always confronted with the same link between different roadmaps. For example, during the period of the third CEO, GF acquired IBM's microelectronics business and announced an investment in 7 nanometer technology and expansion in China. It was actually following the trend and foreseeing the future, but the next CEO announced immediately to quit the 7 nanometer progress, a global layoff of 5%, and the abortion of the expansion in China. He thought that the investment would be too big for the company and the improvement of high-end technologies will be hard to achieve. For GF, the 10 nanometer progress would be enough. Later, GF even abandoned the FinFi technique in producing chips because it did not wish to have the conflict with TSMC again. For some people, it looks like GF has made a hard but right choice. However, such a transformation is definitely harmful to the company. 10 nanometer progress and above are indeed still the mainstream technique and much needed by the industry. This needs what guaranteed income of the company for the recent years, but now that 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer chips are about to come into mass production later this year, is GF still safe? With what is GF going to compete with TSMC? One step further, what about 10 years or even 20 years later? Oh, I'm sorry, these are even far beyond the term of the office of the current CEO. Some analysts pointed out that giving up 7 nanometer technology equals giving up its core competency and bearing its own future. For a long time, GF has been regarded as a backup for TSMC since the company's 10 nanometer and above progresses overlap a lot. For customers, it's good for them to produce any one set of designs that can be accepted by two manufacturers. Now, GF has given up the advanced technology and lost the chance to be a backup, as expected by many analysts. Many customers have turned to TSMC and even other smaller competitors. Now, let's summarize a bit. 
BSMC, Samsung, and Global Foundries are the top three companies of Publi Foundries. BSMC and Samsung are the only two companies capable of 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer chip mass production. As one of the most profiting companies in the world, many people have been eyeballing them from another perspective. Semiconductor manufacturer concentrates highly in East Asia. As long as political conflicts are weak, the worries about the supply chain, these companies are always facing an awkward situation. To achieve some balance and avoid more attacks, BSMC and Samsung are establishing new foundry plants in the United States. What they bring to the stage is the most valuable technique of 5 nanometer progress. Some press also reported that the European Union has also been inviting TSMC and Samsung to build new factories in Europe, but since we have not received a positive reply from them. Nevertheless, the EU has recently released its own plan for the semiconductor industry and plans to take 20% of the production by 2030 and enable the mass production of 2 nanometer chips. Furthermore, mainland China is also progressing in high-end semiconductor manufacture. To conclude, in the nearest future, TSMC and Samsung might still be winning. However, from a longer perspective, the situation will only be more complicated. The market is foreseeing a change which is going to reshape the semiconductor industry. Okay, that's all for today's episode. If you like it, please like and subscribe. If you have suggestions or would like to share in your opinions, please feel free to leave a message. Bye-bye. Stay healthy.